Okay, so have we talked about this whole dog and stick obsession before? I mean, you know that look they get, right? Oh, yeah. Like, they found the holy grail buried in the backyard. Exactly. My pup, like, full-on sprints for the nearest branch no matter what. A stick-seeking missile, basically. Totally. But I gotta say, all that chewing gets me wondering, is it, like, actually good for them? Or is it just pure doggy entertainment? Well, lucky for us, the dog experts over at OnlineHunt.dk tackled this very thing. Ooh. We're taking a deep dive into a Danish article today. Danish dog experts. Best. This I got to hear. So OnlineHunt.dk, for those of us who don't speak Danish, what is this source all about? Think of it as like the ultimate online handbook for dog owners in Denmark. Got everything from the basics to like breed specific stuff. But don't worry, even though we're going Danish today, the core stuff we'll be talking about it's relevant no matter where you are. Phew, good to know, because I was worried I'd need a translator for my pup. So are these Danish experts pro-stick or what? Well, they kick things off by reminding us that chewing, like in general, is uh, it's basically a need, not a want for dogs. It's in their DNA. Okay, yeah, sometimes I forget there's an actual brain in there under all that fur. So why is chewing so important for dogs, like biologically speaking? Well... One of the biggies the article mentions is dental hygiene. Like, chewing is basically their version of brushing. Ah, the old stick as a toothbrush trick. Clever. Right. Helps scrape away plaque and all that. But it's not just about pearly whites. There's a mental aspect, too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, a bored dog is a recipe for disaster. Exactly. Chewing keeps them stimulated. It lets them tap into those, uh, you know, those primal instincts they got from their wolf ancestors. Okay, so chewing, good. Sticks, maybe not so much, right? What's the deal with all the warnings around sticks? Yeah, so the article gets real about some of the dangers lurking in Danish parks and gardens, and let me tell you, it's a little scary. Oh no, don't tell me, like poisonous plants or something. You got it. Turns out, there are some pretty common plants here that are toxic to dogs. And I'm not talking like, a little upset tummy, I'm talking serious stuff. Okay, now I'm really curious, and a little terrified, for all the pups out there munching on random leaves. Okay, hold on, hold on before you unleash this plant list on us. I gotta say, this isn't just a Denmark thing, right? Right, it's about being aware of what's growing in your area. What could be trouble? Exactly. So everybody listening, as soon as this deep dive is over, Google toxic plants dogs and your location. You gotta know your enemy, right? 100%, knowledge is power, for sure. Okay, back to Denmark. What should our listeners over there watch out for specifically? Well, the guster, they call it. Privet in English, I think. Super common, and all parts of it are bad news for dogs. Privet? Seriously, I feel like that's, like, everywhere. It is. But yeah, even a little nibble can mess them up. Digestive issues, weakness, even, like, heart problems in bad cases. Yeah. Wow, okay. Never judge a plant by its harmless-looking leaves, I guess. What else? Suja is another big one. Ornamental gardens love that stuff. But it's got this compound, thujone, that can really do a number on a dog's system. Thujone. Okay, that sounds serious. Like, what kind of number are we talking? Vomiting, diarrhea, could even hurt their liver. Yikes. Okay, this is serious business, and I'm guessing there's more. Oh, yeah. Chris Storn. You probably know it as Holly, especially this time of year. Holly. But those red berries are, like, Christmas decorations. Surely they're not that bad. They love toxic, too. Tummy troubles, drooling, that kind of thing. Okay. I am officially convinced Danish parks are out to get our dogs. Note to self, look up, like, dog-friendly landscaping. But even if we avoided every bad plant out there, there's still the stick itself, right? You're telling me. The article makes it clear. Even regular sticks, they can be a choking hazard or worse, cause internal injuries. And this is where my brain goes to, like the worst case scenarios, like splinters in the worst places, emergency surgery, the whole dramatic shebang. Be honest, how common is that stuff, really? It's definitely not unheard of. I mean, dogs and chewing, that's like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. Right, of course. But sticks, they're not exactly designed with canine safety in mind, are they? Splinters happen, and those can get stuck in their mouth, throat, even further down. Not fun. Okay, yeah, not fun at all. So are all sticks created equal in terms of, like, danger level? Asking for a friend whose dog may or may not have demolished a small branch this morning? Well, anything brittle that splinters easily is obviously a no-go. Like certain cedar and pine trees, they're notorious for that. Got it. Cedar, pine, out of the dog park. What about oak, maple? Those seem sturdier, right? They can be, yeah. But even then, it's a risk. Especially mm. if you've got like a super chewer on your hands. And it's not just the type of wood either. It's 
the size, the shape of the stick if it's already got cracks in it. So basically, it's not just avoid certain trees. It's like inspect every stick my dog even looks at. That, is, that feels impossible. Is there anything we can give them to chew on that's actually safe? Or are we all doomed to a life of like bubble wrapping our dogs? No, no, don't panic. There are definitely safe options. The article actually gives a couple of good alternatives. Okay, because right now I'm picturing like those indestructible toys they give elephants at the zoo. Hit me with your best shot. What can we give our pups instead of sticks? Okay, lay it on me. Yeah. What are these stick substitutes, these miracle objects? Well, they start off with a classic, and for good reason, kid them. Yeah, uh, you know, meat bones. Oh, right, right. Classic for a reason, like you said, most dogs I know go nuts for a good bone. But what makes them better than sticks, aside from, well, not being attached to a potentially poisonous tree? Well, for one thing, they're like, Designed for gnawing, you yep. know, durable, flavorful, keeps dogs busy for a while. Plus, they're actually good for their teeth. Helps clean them, just like chewing on, well, anything, but, you know, tastier. Just got to make sure you're picking the right size bone for your dog. Don't want any choking hazards. Right. Safety first. So bone's good. But what about those dogs who are less about the gnawing and more about dismantling? My guy, he's all about ripping stuff apart. Anything mm -hmm. tough enough to stand up to that kind of enthusiasm. Oh, yeah, the article talks about those, too. Stuffed Kongs. You ever tried those? Kongs. Oh, yeah. My dog, he turns into Einstein trying to get the treats out of those things. Right. Keeps them busy and makes them use their brains a bit. And there's a ton of different ones now. Classic Kongs, puzzle feeders, tough rubber toys for the hardcore chewers. You name it. See, this is why I love these deep dives. I go from my dog can never have nice things to shopping spree at the pet store. <laughs> but I got to ask. You know that classic dog running through the park with a stick image? Mm -hmm. Can we ever recreate that, like, pure joy, but with, I don't know, a rubber bone? Maybe not exactly the same sticks. They've got that, I don't know, that primal thing going on. But we can get pretty close. It's about figuring out what makes your dog tick. Some dogs, they go bonkers for a good puzzle. Others, they just want to play fetch till they drop. So it's less about the stick itself, more about understanding what our dogs are actually getting out of it and then like finding a safer way to give them that. Exactly. This has been like seriously eye opening. I feel like I've gone from dog ownership 101 to like canine connoisseur all in one episode. Glad to hear it. And for everyone listening, next time your dog goes digging for sticks, take a second. Watch him. What is it about that stick? The shape, how it feels in their mouth. Once you get that, you can find something even better and safer that they'll love just as much. And who knows, maybe even more. Well, that's all the time we've got for today's Deep Dive. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And remember, a well-chewed dog is a happy dog. Mm -hmm. Just maybe not on a stick.